Satish sir. Hello sir. Sir, welcome. Welcome, sir. Thanks, sir. Welcome, sir. Nice meeting you. Nice to meet you, sir. Hello. Hello, sir. Good afternoon, sir. Sir, yes, sir. You know? Sir, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, if, if everybody is ready, you can start the session. Just you okay, sir. Sir. The, huh? sir. Okay, 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 sir. நீங்களே பண்ணலாம் போட்டேன் <laughs> department of physical education anomaly university i welcome all the participants and resource persons for the two days international seminar on journal paper writing now let me introduce our chief guest sorry uh, resource person for this session for today's session we have a amazing resource person to share her knowledge with us let me introduce Dr. Judy Arlappan, Head, Department of Maternal and Child Health, College of Nursing, Sultan Kubais University, Sultanate of Oman. She is a researcher, academician, and a good administrator. 
He is a recipient for more than 12 awards for various international from various international bodies. She is an advisory panel member, reviewer, and an edit editorial board member for many highly cited journals. She has 17 projects with grants from various organizations and six non-grant projects. She has published 92 research articles in highly cited journal. With this track record, no other than Dr. Judy Arlapan will be the right person to discuss on, on this topic. It is publication models and avoiding predatory publications. Let us welcome her to the presentation. Welcome, madam. Thank you, sir. Thank you, madam. Uh, a very good afternoon to one and all uh, gathered here. Uh, it's my immense pleasure uh, to be here with Anamali University to deliberate on the topics mentioned. I'm really highly thankful to Dr. Uh, P.V. Selvam, Director, Dr. Vinu, and uh, my own friend, uh, Dr. Mohammad Isa, who referred me uh, to the organizers of the <coughs> Department of uh, Physical Education. And uh, I thank each and every one of you who are uh, involved in organizing this webinar. I'm really happy to share uh, the uh, whatever uh, concepts or uh, knowledge, whatever I have regarding the publication and certain important aspects, which will be very useful for all the academicians. Uh, let me share my screen with you all. Can you please uh, enable the screen sharing? It comes a uh, host disabled participant screen sharing. Can you please enable? Yes, ma'am, enable, ma'am. Okay. Can you see? Can you see the screen? Yes, ma'am. Is it visible to everybody? Yeah, yeah. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma Okay, fine. Thank you very much. Let me start. Uh, again, uh, a happy noon as well as uh, welcome to everybody for the webinar. Uh, this is uh, me. I am Dr. Judy Arlapan, and I am the assistant professor and head of the department. I am working in the Department of Maternal and Child Health, College of Nursing, Sultan Qaboos University, Muscat, Oman. My contact details are given here for your reference. So it is a post lunch session. I know that uh, every one of you may feel sleepy. I am sorry that uh, you may. Have my, I don't want anybody to go into sleep. Therefore, before starting my presentation, I would like to take everybody for a virtual tour to Oman, so that you will be excited to see a new country. And it's a very beautiful country. See, this is Oman. This is a virtual tour to you before my presentation. I have oh, just shared. Yeah. It's a very beautiful country. Okay. You can just uh, see it so that you'll feel fresh about it. So this is uh, my university where I'm working now. Uh, this is our university, Kobus University. These are various pictures of our university. These are the buildings of our university. This is the place I am working now, College of Nursing, Sultan Kobus University. And uh, today in my presentation, <coughs> I'm going to talk about publication models and evading predatory publications. Mainly, I, the, this topic is given to me. However, when I was listening to, the, to yesterday's conference, it, yesterday's webinar, many of the uh, concepts of publication models and evading predatory publications have been covered by Dr. Muthu Kumar. Therefore, I have added a few more important things which will be very useful for all of you. Avoiding plagiarism in academic publications, Increasing the visibility in publication and ways of improving citation and challenges in publication and how we can uh, tackle the challenges. These are going to be discussed today. However, I am going to briefly say about publication models and evading predatory publications before I move on to the other concepts. So all of us should know why publication is very important. Publication is very important to enhance the knowledge and for promotion opportunities. It increases the ability to integrate the new knowledge and it gives information, new information and increases the credibility of the researcher and it contributes to the existing literature and it gives recognition for the institution as well as for the researcher and it produces repository of research efforts as well as it produces theoretical insights 
and it improves the research skills of the researcher and it it grabs the attention of the media when a person is publishing more and giving more true input to the society so therefore all of us have to publish and we have to produce more and more to the society so we might wonder why publication is daunting for uh, many of the new faculty members and doctoral candidates because many of us feel it is very difficult to go for publication it is very uh, threatening and difficult uh, for us to go for a publication all of us are like in a ra rat race to publish more and more because you know we we try it gets rejected again we try repeatedly we try and finally we come out with publication so it is like a rat race only we try 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 and finally we are trying to succeed as much as possible being a novice uh, published public You can cite it, and it will get more citation. The open access journals place an emphasis on improving the visibility and accessibility because it will be freely available in the internet. Anybody, if you wanted to use, we can give the keywords, we can search for the articles, and we can download it, and we can cite it in our own research papers. So this, in this open access journals, the the authors maintain the exploitation rights to their work. That means, in case if there is a retraction need, they can. Uh, the retract work they can edit it they can modify it and they can publish it again whereas in open access journals only it is possible but non exclusive work exploitation is given to the publisher publisher cannot do anything only the authors can do have the exploitation rights therefore open access journal has that positive aspect which is which is very helpful for the researchers in contrast the non open open access journals or closed access journals are visible only to people at institutions where they have license to purchase it or they have to make payment and purchase the article so it will have less citation because only the freely available open access papers uh, are well cited because it is available for the researchers they can take the concept from the papers and they can cite in their papers so the non open access journals often comes in a print version along with the electronic version so coming to the uh sorry um coming to the key elements of the open access journals so it is founded on the principle that publicly funded research should be freely available to the public because publicly funded means it is a government funded uh, paper or a research it should be freely available to the public that is the main law of open access journal and the copyright remains with that author as i mentioned earlier we have the copyright we have the over the paper and the work is freely available in the digital format in electronic format without payment it is available in the digital format and it speeds up the publication process thereby faster the access to the academic publications and open access increases the visibility and impact of the research work because it is available openly and it is compatible with rigorous peer review never think that open access is not without uh, review it is with rigorous peer review therefore it is good it is of good quality so we can truly trust open access publications and it can be shared via variety of formats like journals and digital repositories and publications are made available permanently and independently of any single publisher and open access facilitates and improves the transfer of knowledge between the academic and research community and society as a whole open access is a kind of access please do not think it is a business model it is a kind of access which is really useful for everyone then coming to the four types of open access because i want you all to understand what are the different types of open access journals we have the first one which is called as gold open access model where the author institution or research funder pays the open access fee and the publisher makes the published version free for everybody so we say for example i published a research paper in sage open nursing so in this paper in this journal it is a, it, 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 they asked for a uh, public article publication charges so we i paid for it as a researcher i paid for it so i it comes under gold open by oh, gold open access model in case if my institution is funding for my research or if a research funder like a research council something is funding for your research then 
you can take an amount from that and you can utilize for the publication. Therefore, we call it as gold open access model because the, the payment depends on the author, institution, or the research funder. So that is what is gold open access journal, a gold open access model. So funders usually, they like this gold uh, open access model because they get the acknowledgement for their payment. Therefore, it is well recommended by the funders of the research. The next one is called as green open access model. Green open access model is also referred to self-archiving. This is something uh, different where author's manuscript is kept in the repository, where it is freely available for everyone. It will be kept in a repository, open access repository, where anybody can access to the research article. So the version that can be deposited in the repository is depending on the funder or publisher. So the funder or the publisher should decide whether it is going to be kept in the repository or not. So here, Unlike the gold open access, the copyright for these articles are usually with the publisher or with the society affiliated with. Therefore, we call it as green open access model. And the third one is a very good model, which is really useful for everybody, even people who are unable to pay for the article processing charges, they can use this diamond open access model. Whereas the journal articles published in diamond open access journals have high quality peer review and editing processes, where the gold model is made possible by this article processing fees paid by the authors or institution. In gold model access, uh, it, we are paying, the author or institution is paying. However, in uh, diamond model, there are no article processing fees, but the journal is maintaining a very high quality. Say, for example, in our university, we have Sultan Qaboos University Medical Journal, which is a Scopus Index Journal, which is indexed in PubMed, but it is free of cost. We can publish it in free, free of cost but in the, it undergoes vigorous review process. Say for example, at least six, seven reviews we will be getting from the journal. That means till the journal is satisfied with the, the comments of the reviewer, they, they will not accept for publication. So it undergoes a review process and finally it will get accepted. If it is not suitable, they will re outrightly reject it. And another example is Nursing Forum, Journal of Nursing Scholarship. They are free and there is no article processing fee but it comes under the diamond open access model. The emphasis on diamond open access model is making knowledge production, dissemination, and consumption of as free as possible. So they are making it free as, as free as possible for everyone to utilize it. So this is realized by the volunteers and people who are really volunteer to give quality to our editorial and peer review process, they help the uh, diamond open access model. Say for example, I am one of the reviewer of Sultan Qaboos University Medical Journal where I voluntarily give, give my review comments to the journal papers. So I don't get any payment, but however, I will be giving my contribution as a reviewer to the journal articles. So these uh, volunteers can be individuals or non-profit organization who can work for free for this diamond open access model. So under diamond open access model, both publishing and access to published material is done free of charge. So the moreover, the individuals and institutions get access free of cost. So this is a very good model, which is useful for every researcher who is a new a novice researcher or an expert researcher. And the last model is called as bronze open access model. Here in this bronze open access model, no open access fee is paid, but the publisher chooses to make publication freely available to read. So it is in the hand of the publisher. So he will decide whether I should be keeping it in the repository or not. So, but it is not a recommended model because sometimes some articles may not be freely available if the uh, publisher is not willing to uh, uh, keep it in the repository. Therefore, I would not recommend bronze open access model. Diamond open access model is the best model we can use, go for. And the next topic is evading predatory journals and publication. This is very important for all of us to know because many of us fall in prey to this um, predatory journal and publications. Though uh, I have so many papers published, I myself have experienced publishing in predatory journals. I am not feeling shameful to say that because I was not aware when I was in India, I was not aware that I should not be publishing in predatory journals. So I published many papers, which is of no use finally. So I'm not getting any citation of those articles because it is all, it is all published in printed journals as well as it is not indexed in any database. So I wasted my time and energy in publishing in few of my articles in predatory journals. Therefore, I wasted a lot of time and energy on it. So therefore, as a researcher, I have a very strong desire to teach or enlighten the community, our own people, that we should never go for publishing in predatory publications. So I would like to highlight a few important points how to avoid publishing in predatory journal publications. 
So the predatory, the term predatory journal was coined by Jeffrey Beale. And Beale says that it is publishing counterfeit journals to exploit the open access model in which the author pays and the, the, the publishers will be dishonest and they lack transparency because they get lots of open access fee, but it does not index in any good databases and it is not actually a good journal, whereas we end up with uh, hopeless publications. So I said, that is the reason it is called as predatory publications. If you have, if you want to see, you can go to Jeffrey Beale's list of predatory journals. If you want to check what are the predatory before publication, please go to Jeffrey Beale's list of predatory publications, predatory journals and check which are the journals which are falling under Jeffrey Beale's list of predatory journals. Please do not publish in any journal which is coming under the predatory list of journal. So here in the predatory journal, they will be asking for actively, they will be sending spam emails to the researchers and they will be asking for the manuscripts. And there is no proper review system and no editorial board and they will be publishing mediocre and worthless papers. So we should be very careful with this predatory journals. And they ask for huge publication charges and they're not indexed in standard databases. Their motive is financial gain, that's it. So it is not linked to the, any credible scholarly, academic or technical society also. That also we should be understanding. And they do not receive any public funds or grants. So all these are typical features of predatory journals. So I have, I have highlighted some examples for you to really understand how we should identify. So the first example is, say I have kept a screenshot of some journal pages. It features an editor in chief who also edits numerous other journals from a variety of different disciplines. Actually, this particular journal is, I, I didn't show you the name of the journal. This particular journal is related to the midwifery. Midwifery is related to the birth, birth, birth of child and things like that. See the editorial members, they are one is from a clinical associate professor of medicine, one is from sports, physical education and sports, and another is from integrative functional nutritional medicine, but they are nowhere related to the concept, main core concept of the journal. Therefore, from this, we can understand the editorial board is not relevant to the journal theme, theme of the journal. So we should understand this is a questionable journal. So we should be very careful with this. This is one of the indication. The next indication is false claims about journal metrics and where it is. They will falsely say that it's indexed in Scopus, it is indexed in Springer, it is indexed in Science Direct, ProQuest. They will be, uh, they will be declaring that it is indexed in all these uh, good databases. But if you see uh, in this example, I have highlighted few of the indexing and archiving services. Whereas if you really wanted to check whether it is indexed in the standard databases, you should go to the Scopus website. You should go to the Springer, the Springer database, or you should go to the Science Direct or ProQuest or EBSCO or Say Journals. Directly go there and search for the journals. In case if it is really linked to that, that means it is, it is indexed in that. Otherwise, please never believe whatever is given in the title because exactly whatever is given in the title may not be available. So unless and otherwise you go to the particular uh, databases like Scopus Springer, you will not be able to identify whether it is uh, indexed in such a standard database or not. This is another suggestion. So the next one is they will promise fast publication, but the reality is actually wrong. So if you see, they will say within 10 days, they will get the article published. So you submit the article, within seven days, it will get reviewed and you pay the fees and next six days, it will be published online and the next 10 days, the copy will be discharged. Everything will be happened within a period of 20 days. That means please never believe such claims that it is easy to publish, it is, it is a good journal because predatory journals only will be promising fast publication. So, but in case if it is a Scopus index journal or indexed in Springer, they will give will take a long time. Minimum, I remember one of my paper got accepted after two years. So it took a long time for me to get a paper published in a Scopus Index journal. So, however, in this predatory journal, they will ask only for 20 days. This is not a reality. Please do not believe in such um, announcements. Next one is promise an easy peer review and process. They will say it is a very easy peer review process. It will get accepted soon. Please do not believe in that. Please do not submit any papers where, when any journals where they are promising easy peer review and process. And another thing is have titles very close to those of highly respected legitimate journals with only subtle modification. They will be giving the name of the journal title, Journal of Nursing and Care. So we, we might think it is something related to a pro, uh, Scopus Index journal. Actually, the name of the Scopus Index journal is Journal of 
professional nursing however when we see similar kind of uh, title we tend to fall in prey to that we tend to believe that so please be very careful with the title of the journal and please go to the scopus database and check whether it is indexed in scopus this is another important thing you should keep it in mind and claim to be based in major cities they will say it is based in london or new york but actually it is sub, 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 published somewhere say for example in this picture i have shown omics international journals where we do not know where they have published whether it is in us or whether it is in the uk where we do not know anything because the details are not mentioned here so they will just say it is published in a major cities but actually it is not so so you should be very careful with that so this is another way of identifying predatory publications and make it difficult to find who manages the journal so we will not know when you click on to the contact us there will not be any information who is managing the journal so in case if it is a st standard journal they will mention it is a, it is organized by a, such a society or organization all the details will be mentioned but in case of a predatory journal we will not have any details who is managing the journal so this is also very important to be considered and the scope of interest includes non biomedical subjects alongside the bio biomedical subjects they will mix both biomedical and non biomedical subjects in the same journal which is not actually a good journal and the website and spelling and grammar error so we also should be very careful in case the website is containing spelling and grammar grammar error in a standard journal they will never have spelling and grammar error in a predatory predatory journal definitely you can find lots of spelling and grammar errors and images are distorted and fuzzy see the images whatever they have given ios are journals the images are not at all clear so we can identify clearly it is not a true journal so this is an example and they may include the words international world global or universal see we we will get attracted by looking at these words global journal of research analysis worldwide journal of multidisciplinary research and development international journal of multidisciplinary research and development universal journal of educational research by looking at the uh, title of the journal we will really get impressed however they tend to be uh, fake or they tend to be predatory they will give the name such a name to attract the pub, attract the um, academicians or the researchers so therefore we should be very careful with the terms of such journals and the index copernicus when nicus value is promoted on the website whichever journal is highlighting the index copernicus value which uh, which in with the different different colors please be very careful because they they may be fake journals and description of the manuscript uh, the handling process is lacking in in many of the predatory journal how the manuscripts is handled the process of handling the manuscript is lacking so that is an indication it may be a predatory journal and the manuscripts are required to be submitted via email this is very important to be considered see when we uh, submit to a scopus publication any journal they will ask us to submit through manuscript uh, central system there will be a central system through which we have to log in we have to enter into that and there we have lots of uh, seven eight steps to enter into that therefore we can publish we can submit the paper but in this uh, predatory publication they will ask for they will give a email id and they will ask us to send the uh, article through the email id whoever is asking you to send the paper through the email id please understand they are fake they are predatory so in standard journals they will never ask you to send the public uh, send the article through email so this is an another indication so there is no retraction policy this is i want you all to understand what is retraction policy because in case if there is a mistake made in the manuscript we have always the authority to retract or correct the literature and notify the readers that the publication contains significant errors so in that case if if it is a, a standard journal they will always have the retraction policy but in case of a predatory journal there will not be any retraction policy so the, the, the we can remove the, the remove the uh, article from the digital library in case if there is a duplicate or redundant publication or if there is a plagiarism or if there is a prior publication without, without proper citation and failure to disclose conflict of interest and disputed authorship unrelated pending these are the various reasons where we can go for retraction but in case of a standard journal we can retract the paper due to any of these reason however in case of a predatory journal there is no retraction policy so we should be very careful when we are selecting the journal appropriately then information on whether on how the journal content will be digitally preserved also will be absent in the predatory journal and the article processing publication charge will be either very low or very high so the very low it can be up to 150 us dollar very very high it can be above 3000 dollars also 
So this also is an indication that we have to check very carefully whether it is uh, predatory or not. The journal claiming to be open access either retaining copyright research or fail to mention the copyright. They will not mention anything about the copyright. So this is another indication. The contact email address is non-professional, non-journal non affiliated. See example, example at gmail.com or at Yahoo.com. It, like, it is like a personal email ID. So it is an indication it is a predatory journal. Please uh, keep it in mind. And spam emails are sent to the authors. This is another indication that it is a predatory journal. So therefore, my recommendation is uh, please, to be very careful with this uh, kind of categories. And the homepage language targets the author. They will be using flowery language. They'll be using lots of flowery language to attract the authors. This is another indication. So we have to be very careful. See, damn, another open access predatory journal, that predatory publisher. Every day we are getting new, new, new predatory publishers coming into the place and we are falling in prey and we are really affected by this predatory publications. And th therefore, I, I would recommend you to follow the blacklist and whitelist. Blacklist is seeks the list of uh, sites which are highly suspected to be untrustworthy. Whereas whitelist of journals seeks to include sites which are confirmed to be trustworthy. So you can see the list of journals which are whitelisted and list of journals which are blacklisted. So with this, you can differentiate whether it is um, whether it is a trustworthy journal or an untrustworthy journal. So we have lots of uh, whitelist journals and publishers. I have given this list of whitelist journals and publishers. After my presentation, I will share the PowerPoint to the organizers. So whoever wants the slides, please collect it from the organizers so that you can use it for your future. And these are the resources for the journal selection. If you really want to find the appropriate journal, what you have to do is you have to type the title. Say, for example, if you want to find the Elsevier journal, which is indexed in Scopus, you should go to that Elsevier journal finder and you should be uh, typing the title of the paper and you should be uh, copying the co uh, abstract of the paper and you should give the keywords and you should be giving a search option. If you give the search option, automatically it will find the appropriate journal which is relevant to the abstract you have submitted. So therefore, it will show the relevant journals which are uh, which you can submit your paper. So you don't have to break your head, which journal I will submit and where I will go. Never break your head. You can go to Elsevier Journal Finder or Springer Journal Finder or uh, any other journal finder which is listed here. You can go there, you can paste your abstract, cut and cut copy and paste your abstract and you can identify which journal is more appropriate. So this also you can uh, see it later when I share my uh, slides. And the next one which you have to be very careful is predatory conference. See how the, how we are uh, experiencing predatory publications, same way we are experiencing many predatory conferences or we are attending many predatory conferences. So here we receive invitations to attend or present in the conferences with excessive uh, conference fee. So here uh, we should protect ourselves from attending the predatory conferences because we will be wasting lots of money, energy, time on attending the predatory conference. Therefore, I thought this is very important and useful for all of you. So the top 10 indicators of a questionable conference is it is organized by a non-profit entity rather than a credible scholarly society. So it is definitely by a non-profit entity that means, that, is, that means they are doing it for money making. So combine a number of fields of topics. So many uh, disciplines, they will combine together. They will combine medicine, they will combine sports, they will combine uh, chemistry. In many of the fields together, they will combine in a single conference. That is an indication that it is a predatory conference. And they will be sending spam prospective antecedents to submit the proposals and register for the conference. They themselves will send emails to us. So register for this conference. So when you're receiving such a spam email, please avoid it. Please reject or unsubscribe to, uh, to those um, senders so that you will not be getting, uh, you know, attracted by the spam uh, mails for attending the predatory conferences. Information about who is organizing the conferences also will be missing and acceptance, will, acceptance, is pro, acceptance of the research paper will be accepted very quickly. That is an indication it is a predatory conference. So the conference name bears a striking resemblance to the highly prestigious conference. As I showed in the previous example, they will keep similar names which are like a very prestigious conference. So we will get uh, confused and we will get, uh, we will re-attend those conferences. So therefore we should be very careful when checking the title of the conference. And they will say, they will guarantee our paper will be published in the conference proceeding. However, later on, they ask for the publication charges, which is an indication of a predatory conference. 
and conference websites are unstable always. They will keep changing the URLs of the conference website. That is an indication that it is a predatory conference. And the website text contains poor grammar and numerous spelling errors. As I mentioned in the predatory publications, here also we can see in the websites lots of poor grammar and numerals spelling errors. The fee will be very high, but the quality of the conference will be very bad. So therefore, uh, I have so far covered how to identify the predatory publications as well as predatory conferences. This is, um, this is for, I'm again reinstating that all of us should be very careful in identifying the predatory publications as well as predatory conferences, which is another important part which is as associated with this plagiarism, how to avoid plagiarism in academic publications. So plagiarism, as you all know, it refers to using some other person's ideas and information without acknowledging that specific person as a resource. So we will be using their ideas and information without even acknowledging that it is the contribution of the particular person. That is called as plagiarism. So the plagiarism is a serious error. Many of us are not aware of it. So we, I want everybody to be aware how serious plagiarism is. So I, I have just uh, highlighted a few of the examples how plagiarism affected people's lives. Say for example, a historian resigns from a board after allegations that he had approximated texts from other sources in one of her books. So she was resigned from the board when she, when she was identified that she copied uh, some sources from her other books. So that is one example. Another example is a writer for a newspaper who was found to have plagiarized material for some of his articles ended up resigning his position. He was made to resign because it was, he was found that he plagiarized some content in the newspaper. And a biochemist resigns from a prestigious cl clinic after acquisition that a book he wrote contained appropriated portions from National Academy of Science report. That means he has just copied without acknowledging National Academy of Science report. So he, he was made to resign from a prestigious clinic. And a famous musician, he was found guilty for unconscious plagiarism because he used musical, the previous musical group's recorded song in of his song. And finally, that song became very hit. And the musician was forced to pay compensation for the infarction. So therefore, in the unknowing and unconsciously, he plagiarized, but he was uh, made to pay compensation for his plagiarism. The kind of uh, punishment varies. Either it's a resignation or uh, compensation. In some other way, they will be uh, penalizing the person who is plagiarizing. A college student is forced to resign after allegations that he failed to attribute to the source of material which was part of his co college convocation speech. So he used some, some material in, from the college convocation speech in his, uh, uh, in his base, so source of material. So he did not acknowledge that. So here was he was forced to resign from the position. And the US senator has his master's degree canceled because he, uh, he plagiarized some content in the academic papers. An education minister resigns his soundman position because he, uh, she plagiarized doctoral degree uh, where some of the, the thesis she has plagiarized. And a very famous psychologist having a doctoral degree, again, he was uh, made to, uh, the, his doctoral dissertation was withdrawn because he, has, he plagiarized the work. See, this is the, just I showed this example for you to understand how serious plagiarism is. So it, it, even, even in our lives, it may give impact. Therefore, let us be very careful and aware how plagiarism affects our life and we should avoid doing plagiarism in our academic work. So the impact of plagiarism on academic publication. So it is noted that 10% of the research journal articles are drawn due to plagiarism. So as I mentioned already, uh, there is a retraction policy. When there is a retraction policy, there is a possibility that they may identify plagiarism when published without even if journalists uh, uh, publishing an article and which is identifying that uh, the paper is plagiarized, they may retract the article. And 14 percent is just withdraw, withdrawn due to duplicate publication. I, I know a case here where that particular person, she uh, published her own paper in different titles in two different journals. But one journal identified, one Scopus Index journal identified that she has duplicated the publication. Therefore, her name was blacklisted and it was put up in the journal uh, page and everybody, came, every one of us came to know about it. It is a very shame on our part and it is really duplicate publication is also a kind of plagiarism. Therefore, we must be very careful avoiding duplicate publication, which is a kind of plagiarism. And plagiarism may be on the rise due to, because nowadays we can see, uh, we are hearing more about plagiarism because maybe the reason is there is increasing access to research article in the internet. So whenever we want to search something, we go to the internet, 
immediately we copy and paste and we just uh, complete the work so we and uh, we are forced to publish more and we try to copy from the other sources and we try to publish finally we end up with plagiarism so therefore this is a serious offense and the theft of ideas nowadays it is easily identified by the experts because now there are experts who are well trained in the plagiarism software they know how to identify whether it is a plagiarist content or not so say for example there are many peer reviewers when we are submitting an article for publication there are many peer reviewers they will be reviewing our article a peer reviewer will be able to easily pick up a data or a wording which is similar to the previously published work so she would have reviewed similar article in the earlier stages so when she finds similar paper again she will have a doubt okay this already i reviewed it and when clicking maybe she will go back and check and she will the the plagiarist work and it will be automatically rejected or uh, the person will be penalized in some other way so moreover many academic journals have begun using plagiarism detection tools like cross check authenticate and turn it in so these are all the um, uh, you know like uh, um, uh, plagiarism tools which is helping us to identify whether it, whether the information is plagiarist or not so it is possible that a score of 30 percentage will turn out to be 30 percentage match from the own source or 30 percentage can be from multiple sources say for example 4 to 5 percentage from each source up to 30 percentage also considered be a plagiarism say for example if you find six separate matches of 5 percentage 5 in the 630 six separate matches of 5 percentage that also indicates that the person has plagiarized from a single source of 30 percentage that means all 30 percentage has been taken from a single source 5 percentage in separate separate matches so however it is considered as a plagiarism because it is quoted from a single site single source so match in the discussion or conclusion is a serious problem see uh, when we are writing a research paper especially our original article we will be writing the discussion and conclusion in our own words because the research originated from our study the results originated from our study should be discussed with support literature however when we are giving the supportive literature when you are citing when you are just adding the other literature without acknowledging the author or without paraphrasing the information automatically it will show more high high similarity index therefore we must be very careful when you are citing some information in the discussion chapter please paraphrase very carefully paraphrase it again without changing the meaning paraphrase it carefully and cite the uh, paper in the uh, discussion the something which is recommended and review articles could be expected to have high originality in the similarity index because when in review articles we will be adding more of uh, citations from the other sources so in this case we can expect more similarity score however with uh, paraphrasing we can reduce the similarity score and there are two options i would like to say when we are because i in our university we do um, uh, turn it in check so turn it in check there are in the, in the when you are setting up the things we it will ask whether you are, want to exclude bibliography or whether you want to exclude quotation marks say for example if i am citing uh, some information from the uh, original source i have to put it in a quotation mark so that when i click on uh, exclude quotation marks it will not get it will not show the similarity index because i am putting the quotation mark with the citation so that it will not show high similarity index similarly when you are excluding the bibliography when you are clicking on excluding bibliography you should have a section of bibliography in your paper or a reference in your paper so that you you have to click on exclude bibliography so in that case that part also will not be shown in the similarity index so the person whoever is operating the turn it in or authenticate should be very careful in uh, clicking on these systems otherwise high similarity index will be shown uh, in the paper so now i am going to say how to avoid the what are the strategies to avoid plagiarism so in our university <coughs> we have less than 15 percentage of similarity which is accepted for submission of assignments and research proposal when a student is submitting any assignment we wanted to check whether the students are writing their assignments on their own we don't want the students to copy from the other sources therefore we check all the assignments of our submitted to our by our students to the university we check it in the turnitin software and if it is less than 50 percentage we accept the assignment so similarly for submitting the research proposals to ethics committee it should be less than 15 percentage it is our academic integrity policy in our university so that this percentage is accepted in our university so what i'm trying to say is it is a standard practice that every university can follow so that the student will be students and the faculty will be very much aware that we should be very careful with the similarity index as well as plagiarism how to avoid plagiarism because if it is more than 15 percentage they should be alerted that they will be punished in some way 
so that they will avoid ha having high similarity in the publications. And the ethical writer always acknowledges the contribution of the author. Definitely, if I am an ethical author, writer, I will acknowledge whoever is the contributor of the uh, paper. Because when I'm citing somebody, I, am, I have to acknowledge. When I'm taking a concept from a paper, I should really acknowledge the author. So the ethical writer always acknowledges the original contributor. Any verb I think taken from another source should be put up in a quotation mark so that we are acknowledging and citing the author who wrote that verb at him. That is also very important. And when we are summarizing others' work, we should use our own words and we should condense others' contribution in a shorter version. And when paraphrasing others' work, please use your own words and you should use your own syntactical structure. Don't uh, uh, write a different concept because the concept should be the same. Though you are using your own, own words, the concept of the original author should be the same. The concept, content, content or concept of the original author should not be changed because of our paraphrasing. That everybody should be very careful. And whether we are paraphrasing or summarizing, we must always identify the original source of information. And we should be reproducing the exact meaning of the original author. We should not change the meaning because we are conceptualizing the idea from the original source and we are writing it. So we should be reproducing the original meaning without changing the meaning. We have to acknowledge the author but the, name, the words can be paraphrased in a way it gives the actual meaning as like a original author. And we also should have a thorough command of the language and good understanding of the ideas and terminology. Then only we can go for a paraphrasing. If you don't understand the uh, concept of the original author, or if you do not have a language to paraphrase, we, we may not be able to uh, paraphrase it properly. So we should really have a good command over English language and a good understanding of the ideas. Therefore, we can uh, properly paraphrase the content. And please provide a citation. And if you are submitting a publication to a journal, publish uh, submit only to a single journal. Do not submit uh, a paper, same paper to, to, uh, to three, two, three different journals at the same point. And this is again wrong. So please submit a paper for publication in only one journal. In case if it is getting rejected, you can submit it to another journal. And in case if you feel after submitting, if you feel that the journal is not appropriate, you can always withdraw. You can write a mail to the uh, so editor and you can withdraw the paper from the journal. Then you can transfer the paper to another journal. So please do not submit same paper to more than one journal at a point of time. And if there is a result of a complex study, this is again, we have uh, many people make mistakes. If there is a comprehensive component of a, a PhD thesis, please submit as a single paper. Because uh, if, you, if you slice it into different uh, papers and if you're giving the same outcome, then it is considered to be plagiarism. So if there is a complex variable, considering a single outcome, try to make it as a single paper and publish it. Do not uh, fragment it or do, do not uh, make it into slices and do not make it as individual papers. Because if you are giving outcome, the same outcome in different, different forms and different, different titles, finally we will end up with plagiarism. And also authors who submit a manuscript for publication containing previously disseminated data, reviews, conclusion, et cetera, must clearly indicate to the editors and readers the nature of previous dissemination. Because we should indicate the present reader, the author, that it is already, the, it is disseminated in this form. It is disseminated in this um, way so that they will know, okay, these are the information which is already published. So that they will take, in, take, take into consideration. And authors are urged adhere to, urge to adhere to the spirit of ethical writing and avoid uh, reusing their own previously published text. So say, for example, we call it a self plagiarism. Say, for example, if I have published a paper, if I want to publish another paper, I should not be taking the same content, whatever I have published in my previous paper into my new paper. Therefore, I am trying to self plagiarize my own work. So that also should be avoided. So in case of a conference and similar audiovisual presentation, follow the same ethics of uh, writing for publication. So use the same ethics, however, whenever you are presenting in the conferences and in the audiovisual presentation. In addition to the standard practices of ethical scholarship, authors must be mindful to the reader's expectations and applicable issues related to the in intellectual content rights. So this is very some, something very important to be considered. And authors are strongly urged to double check their citation because sometimes we may miss out because in the, either in the APA style or in the Vancouver style, whichever style it is, please make sure that there is appropriate citation in the in-text as well as the in-text citations are there in the reference. It should be cross-checked. So in-text citation should be cross-checked whether it is there in the reference list so that we will be going hand in hand. It will be matched appropriately. 
this is something very important that we should be double checking our citations. And authors should always ensure that each reference notation appearing in the body of the text listed in the citation, as I mentioned already. And in addition, authors should also ensure that all elements of a citation, especially spelling of the author's name, volume of the journal, pagination, everything should be taken from the original paper, not from a secondary source. Because sometimes in the secondary source, the information may be pronounced wrongly. Therefore, please take the uh, author details, the publication details or reference details from the original source so that you will not make any mistakes when you're citing it. Finally, when appropriate, authors should ensure the credit is going to these um, authors who first reported the phenomenon. So it should be really acknowledged. And the references used in the paper should only be used when they are directly related to the contents. So please do not use the references which are not related to the original content of the paper. Because some people, I have seen a person uh, doing self-citation, lots of self-citation. Self so he wanted to increase his uh, citation. Therefore, uh, whichever, whichever paper he has published uh, earlier, so he used to add all his citation to the present paper. So like that, like that, he keeps on adding self-citation. Now his uh, citation index has gone more than 1,500 citation. Therefore, this is an example how people are uh, relating or the citation which is not related to the actual content. So we should be very careful about it. So in the, in, intentional inclusion of references of questionable relevance of the purposes to be avoided. Say, for example, which is not relevant to the current paper, we should never include any references which is not related to the current paper. That also should be avoided. And always cite the actual work uh, that is consulted. And generally, when describing others' work, do not cite an original paper if you are only relying on the secondary summary of the paper. And if an author must rely on a secondary source, describe the content of a primary source, the, the person should properly cite the author. Above all, always indicate to the reader that the actual source of the information is being reported. This is very important because actual information should be reported. Wrong information should not be reported without acknowledging the contribution of the author. So when borrowing heavily from a source, authors should always craft their writing because when you're so, uh, borrowing this uh, from other sources, please make sure that again, you are uh, citing the authors appropriately. When appropriate, authors have an ethical responsibility to report evidence that runs contrary to the point of view. This is something more important I want to highlight. Because say, for example, when I'm writing my paper, I am finding some information which are contrary to my point of view. However, I have to report that in my, uh, in my paper. Instead of that, I should not uh, please uh, the uh, author by giving a positive response. If it is contradictory to my study finding, I should be actually reporting that. So please keep that in mind. When there is a contradictory finding, try to report it as such. And in addition, evidence, when citing supporting studies that suffer from methodological, statistical, or other types of shortcomings, that also should be pointed out in the paper. So when we are writing the discussion, we may come across studies where there will be methodological error, statistical error, or other types of errors, which has to be reported in our discussion. So this study was, uh, this study is showing significant uh, this, study is, this study findings is consistent with my study finding. However, there are methodological, statistical, and other shortcomings in this, in this study that has to be actually reported. So these are the various things we should be keeping it in mind when you are uh, in order to avoid plagiarism. And authorship, actually, sir, we have to make a, uh, you have to contribute, you have to accept only those who are individuals who have made substantive contributions to the project merit of the paper. That means whoever has made, significant contribution in the paper, please include them in the authorship. So people who are not contributing to the paper, like ghost authorship, never include such people in your paper, because this is really another kind of plagiarism. They will do that. And in case of a faculty-student collaboration, in case if the student is really doing the project, especially we should be very careful with the master's thesis as well as PhD thesis. If the master's thesis, if it is done by the, if you, the work is done by the student, therefore the student should be the first author. Similarly, for a PhD thesis, the student is the first author and the mentor can be the second author or a uh, last author, depending upon the agreement for, between the student and the mentor. But never, the mentor cannot be the first author because many places we do this mistake where mentors try to be the first author, which is wrong. Thus, in case of a student project, only the student should be the first author, the mentor can be the second author. So the academic and professional ghost, ghost authorship also should be, it, it is ethically unacceptable. And in case if there is a possible conflict of interest, please disclose it so that you are, you are protected from the uh, possible effects of conflict of interest.
and the last part is increasing the visibility in the publications because this uh, this part i felt it will be very useful for all of us so for increasing the visibility in publication the first point i would like to highlight is get a unique author identifier say for example that is called as orsid orsid is helping us to distinguish my ourselves and our work from other researchers so for example this is the this is the orsid uh, login id i have given here every one of us every researcher should have the login id uh, by uh, which is created from orsid so this identifier is used in the manuscript and data submission process and it is embedded into the metadata permanently and it is linked to the author whenever there is a research say for example for me as judy arlappan i have an orsid id so when i whenever i am submitting a paper for publication i will be linking with my orsid id so that all my publications are connected to my orsid id so that uh, nobody else can claim that is uh, that is their work so because it is related to my orsid id it will be only my, my property so please understand all of us many of us do not have this orsid id therefore i recommend every one of you to create your own orsid id and be be unique with your be distinct with your research publication and it also used by the funders to streamline the grant application process in case if anybody wants to give you grant they will check your orsid profile whether this person has a good track of publication whether the person has reported the properly reported the publications properly they will check it very carefully uh, using the orsid id so this is uh, one step for increasing your visibility in publication the second one is share your outputs in uh, share outputs of your research especially the publications preprints conference papers posters presentations everything all is all are the evidence of your research activity therefore make it publicly publicly accessible to everybody so it should be it should be publicly accessible we have something called as open doar this is a comprehensive database of open access repositories you can submit all your uh, production in time in terms of uh, papers posters presentations video anything it can be deposited there so that uh, it will be stored there and it will be publicly accessible to everyone similarly we have institutional and uh, subject repositories you can submit it to the those repositories so that it will get stored in those repository so it will be uh, publicly visible to everyone that is the second thing which is uh, to increase your research visibility and popular these are the examples i have given you can later on see it popular publication subject repositories for example ag econ it is specific to agriculture and applied economics ar xiv it is uh, very specific to physics mathematics computer science quantitative biology finance and statistics site seer it is very specific to computer and information science phil papers it is related to philosophy pubmed central is uh, mainly for medicine research papers in economics we have repec which is economic and social science research ssrn it is mainly for the social science business law and economics research so these are the subject specific repositories where you can place your research product products into this repositories which will be freely available for all the everybody and sharing your research data this is another one which i would recommend so please share your research data to mendeley or uh, digital dryad uh, digital repository and many other repositories which are available where some data sets also yeah. can be shared into this so that everybody can just uh, see it and they can analyze whether it is really truthful or whether it is whether the data what they what they, what is submitted by the researcher is original so it is it will be very openly available so nobody can misuse it because it is already available in the repository and even if somebody is trying to misuse it you can easily identify so this is something very important and sharing other research outputs especially slide share is very important you can as for example after my presentation i can share my slides through slide share so anybody who wants to uh, go through they can go through it so it can be saved in a form of powerpoint pdf or a keynote in any form it can be saved and we have many other options available f100 research and github there are many other options available that also we can uh, share the information and create a deep up to date online cv this is something very important because we really don't uh, because even i have not tried it actually i plan after this uh, preparation i thought i should really uh, do a online um, <clears throat> profile of my cv so this is something very interesting i when i read it actually this uh, personal and we can uh, post our uh, cvs in our personal and institutional web pages because institutional web page the cvs are already available but if you have your own personal web page we can create uh, we can create this online cv and we can post it so that people will know about us and our about our research productivity so our uh, citation counts our downloads attention to the social web all this is possible with through this online cv 
and another one is google scholar scholar citation profile all of us should be having a google scholar citation profile please link it uh, link uh, this google scholar citation profile with your uh, personal account or with your official account so say for example in our university we have created this google scholar citation profile through our university's um, uh, university's mail id so that uh, university it, it is a kind of uh, visibility to the university university will be seeing our uh, google scholar profile and actually it shows uh, more and more visibility to the university when it is linked to the university profile so either through this our h index and i index uh, can be seen how active we are in our research in the last 5 years how our papers are cited and how frequently it is cited all these can be seen through google scholar citation profile and we have something called as impact story story which is freely available online tool that also uh, we can uh, submit our presentations publications data posters etc and this is linked with our orcid profile and orcid link is we have to synchronize the data uh, from orcid to this impact story so we will maybe we can make our research visible to the society and uh, the next one is called as kudos which is a recent software which is uh, helping us to promote our research outputs so this is again a free um, service which is available here also we can create our links to the full text and information information like short title lay language explanation and impact statement and link to additional related content everything can be posted in this kudos so that everybody can access to this uh, information so we are increasing our visibility through this kudos also so all of all these uh, strategies can be tried so engage in social networking and communities like research gate academia.edu linkedin all these profiles please get connected so that in research gate you can uh, post your publications and uh, you can link your publications in academia.edu we can uh, showcase our publications and linkedin it is not actually a professional it is a, it is not a very specific ad academic network it will be a professional network where we can still post our publications and research outputs through linkedin so that a broader community can see our profile and we can get collaboration through linkedin so this is a very good platform where you can get lot of professional uh, network across the world and mendeley is a reference manager and academic social network which will be he very helpful in organizing the documents and collaborate with others online and discover the latest research and blogging is very helpful where we can write our own research content and it is freely available and everybody can access and everybody can res respond to blogs and there is something called as research blogging which is very specific to research uh, of anthropology astronomy biology chemistry engineering ecology for such speciality this research blogging is very useful where it is uh, limited because it is very limited to specific areas so this is called as research blogging whereas the common blogging is open to everybody and we have science blogs which is very specific to medical and physical science or to humanities so these are the various blogs we can use to increase our visibility and twitter is another platform which is very good nowadays and uh, when you are uh, putting something in when you are posting something in twitter look out for hashtags for events in your field so that people will get connected and please comment on the tweets which is of interest to you so that you will get responses from from people and you can collaborate with people and uh, set up search alerts so that uh, you will know somebody is interested and they will contact you and uh, use a decent uh, twitter app on your mobile or desktop say for example tweetdeck uh, is a desktop app and ecophone is a mobile app which is uh, which you can through which you can use the twitter and tweet when your community is most most active so that uh, you can get lots of inputs from your uh, professional community and the, the the last thing is ways of improving the citation how we can improve our citation because we are taking lots of efforts to publish however many of us are not getting good citation therefore we can use some important strategies to improve our citation and visibility to the society please use a unique name consistently throughout your academic careers because even me i did some mistake in the beginning i was writing my name as judy i did not write my name as judy arlan actually internationally our name with the father's name is accepted so what i did i did not uh, write uh, judy arlan in the beginning i wrote only as judy because if you see by citation i did not get many of the citation because my names are differently mentioned because of because this is due to lack of awareness so now after joining this organization i started using the official name judy arlan now everything is getting linked to my judy arlan account so please uh, don't make mistakes because i am just giving an example that we should not be making such mistakes in future 
So please use the same name consistently throughout the academic careers and use a standardized institutional affiliation and address because uh, no, don't use any abbreviation. When you're using abbreviation, it will not easily identify. And repeat key phrases in the abstract while writing naturally. So when you're writing the abstract, you uh, repeat the key phrases so that it will easily identify. Then assign the keyword terms to the manuscript. So from the mesh terms, please use appropriate keyword which is related to the mesh term or whichever database which, uh, which is supposed to be assigned by the journal. And make unique phrase that reflects the author's research interest. Say for example, I am interested in happiness. So if I am interested in happiness, whenever I'm publishing my related papers, I should be used, using the same term happiness in all my manuscripts. Instead, I should not be writing pleasure or some other synonyms instead of happiness because then my citation will go off. So in order to get good citation, I should be citing the same kind of uh, terminology throughout my, in all my manuscripts. Though it is different manuscript, but if it is related to the same concept, use the same terminology for increasing your authority uh, and publish in journals with high impact factor because people will be uh, citing the papers which are published in high impact factor journals and self archive articles. This is very important. Freely, please make it freely available online. That is the reason in the previous slides, I was giving an example of Twitter, Facebook, uh, ResearchGate, LinkedIn, everywhere, wherever possible, self archive the article, just uh, post it uh, freely available to everybody. And the research shows that more than 50% of the citation is getting, people are getting cited due, uh, by doing archiving of article. When we are doing more and more self-archiving, we will have more and more citation because it is not like publishing or uh, publicizing our act. Actually, we should be really publicizing us. In the professional way, we should really publicize our performance so that the professional community will cite our uh, contribution. And keep your professional web pages and publish list up to date. So I would recommend uh, us if you're a really active researcher, keep your own professional web page and uh, list all your publications up to date in the web page so that people will know about it and they will try to cite more and more. And make your research easy to find, especially in the online searches. And open access increases the citation. As I mentioned uh, earlier, open access, it is freely available so everybody will cite more and more. And deposit the paper in the open access repository. Again, research has identified that 1,200 citations in one person uh, have got 1,200 citation in one year since he has deposited his paper in open access repository. See how nice it is because people, it is openly available for everybody. So people started citing more and more and publish with international authors. This is very important. So we may tend to, because we have a very short uh, uh, circle, we should not limit ourselves with a very short circle. We should try to collaborate with international authors so that the, uh, we will have more citations because it is identified through research uh, before the site, the, when the person is getting, uh, I mean, collaboration with national authors, it is getting cited up to four times more than that, more than those without international co-authors. Therefore, international co-authors is very much required for a publication visibility as well as to increase the citation. And team authors articles get cited more. When you're doing as a team, you will get cited more because high cited articles are authored by a large team of scientists. So literally one or two people. So it will have many people in the same paper that will get cited more and use more references. This is another strategy where we can get more. Publish a long paper. Don't publish very, very short paper because long paper will have more references and more citations. And publish papers with Nobel laureates. It is impossible for our level maybe, but if you're a high level scientist, you can really think of publishing with Nobel laureates, which will increase your uh, citation and contribute to Wikipedia. Whenever possible, we can write to Wikipedia and our names will get cited. Because in Wikipedia, when you're giving information, your names will be referred there so that you'll get more uh, citation. And start blogging. As I mentioned earlier, please start blogging and join academic social networking sites and write a review paper, especially a review paper. It can be in the form of a systematic review, integrative review, or a comprehensive review. Because when you're uh, citing more and more, uh, more um, information in the literature review, it will get cited more. Uh, therefore, we rec I recommend that you can write more of review paper to get more citations. So like editorials, letters to editors, news items, meeting abstracts, case studies are generally poor, poorly cited. These uh, kind of articles are poorly cited. However, review papers are highly cited. That you can write. And papers published after having first been rejected elsewhere receive significantly more citation. This was little very, um, uh, very much uh, impressive for me because I thought uh, maybe when you are, when it is getting rejected from the other journals, 
we will get lots of uh, review comments from the uh, reviewers therefore what we do we try to improve the paper more and more the paper becomes perfect when it is getting rejected from many other sources finally when we get published in the final source it will have more of citation because the quality of the paper will be very good and papers with larger number of call outs also uh, request more citation call out is something where um, we can uh, create some text by a connection of line or arrow or similar graphic representation or a different uh, font when we use the editor will get attracted to that and such a kind of uh, information will get more cited that is another information i want to share with you and avoid selecting a question type of title when um, when you want to publish please avoid keeping the title as a question type because when you are keeping a uh, uh, title as a question title people may not uh, uh, download those kind of papers so avoid using question type of title in your papers and share your uh, research data in publicly available data sets so it it, uh, it is identified that 69 percentage of increase in the citation when you are sharing the research data in the public profile as i mentioned in the previous uh, slides uh, our uh, raw data can be uh, submitted in the uh, mendeley so you say when such things are available uh, people be, people trust uh, trust your uh, work and that 69 percentage of increases in the citation happen when you are sharing the research data and publish across disciplines and present a working paper say for example if you want to present a currently working paper you can submit it to ssrn that is uh, elsevier product which is called the social science research network and selected net, uh, selected works you can submit it it is a repository for preprints so when it is uh, when you are working on a paper as a preprint it can be submitted there and it will stay available for people to read and cite and publish your article in one of the journals everyone in your discipline reads say for example whichever discipline you are in the most uh, read journal try to publish your article so that people will read those journals and they will try to cite your uh, paper and publicize yourself this is we feel very much hesitant to publicize ourselves because um, uh, we feel shy uh, sh you know shy to publish uh, publicize ourselves it is not we should not feel shy to publicize ourselves we should publicize ourselves in the public platforms like uh, linkedin and uh, facebook twitter everywhere so that people will be aware of our productivity and they will get more of uh, citation as well as you should uh, publish your uh, published article with a email signature so this shows that you are really uh, showing that the people wanted to people should read those papers and publishing your work in a journal with the highest number of subtracting and indexing is another way of increasing your uh, uh, citation and create a podcast podcast is nothing but a spoken word digital audio describing the research project either by your youtube or vimeo you can uh, create a podcast in a word, spoken word and it can be um, publicly available to the youtube so that people will understand the actual concept of the paper and make an online cv like rc and research id publish tutorial papers tutorial papers is nothing but where the concept of the actual publication can be explain, explained in a tutorial paper so that people will understand everybody will understand so that is something very important and familiarity with acad academic advertiser advertisement tool is another strategy so that also i would recommend and send announcements to appropriate email list that people will know that this is the paper which is published so that uh, they will uh, start referring to that and they may cite your paper and uh, put, put a paper copy in any academic lunch room when you just walk around if there is academic lunch room please post a copy in academic lunch room and pin a copy on the first page of your common notice board so that people will get uh, get to see that and give a short talk about your paper on the campus with snacks with your friends so that people will know okay what is this uh, this is the output of your research they will be interested to know about it and give a lecture on your topic to the senior class of students and uh, you can also share your research with your post graduate students to review and give your give, give their comments these are various strategies we can use for it and other than that we have slide share google plus and uh, we have lots of uh, enhancing visibility and impact tools which are available and uh, the title of the cv can be made on the home page under recent publication with the link so that uh, people will get uh, get uh, get to see your uh, cv with the recent publication and announce the publication on the research page and even facebook and um, the I, i because though we have many things to say we still face lots of challenges in publication especially we may have challenges like choosing a suitable journal and language and science style because to choosing the suitable journal i already told you many strategies like uh, many journal finders and you can uh, choose the suitable journal and language and style this is a very big problem for us because usually they expect a high quality high high level of english language when we publish 
so they expect us uh, to give it give our papers to the international english language editors and uh, they ask for me annually we okay whether i should go for uh, paying such a, such a huge amount of money and we may end up on avoiding publication so this is another challenge we face and plagiarism and similarity is another problem we come across and escalating cost because as i mentioned the open access publication charges are very high and as an individual researcher they may not be able to spend a lot of money on it and acknowledgement issue uh, who is not meeting the authorship criteria they try to come in to your paper so they, then that is a challenge say for example people wanted to be a ghost author uh, and uh, they wanted to just uh, put their name therefore you think why why i should publish let me withdraw my publication there are many challenges people face whether uh, they should be the lead author or whether they should be a corresponding author or whether they should be a co-author depending upon the type of publication people always have confusion whether i should do a whether i should be a lead author or whether i should be a corresponding author or whether i should be a co-author so here i would like to say the lead author assumes the overall responsibility of the manuscript and the and he is responsible for the integrity of the work as the whole and ensuring that the reasonable care and effort has been taken to determine that the data are complete accurate and reasonably interpreted because the lead author has a major role if you want to be the lead author you should have done a major contribution contribution to the work and you should be able to respond to any kind of queries so that person can take up the lead author and corresponding author should be able to correspond to the journal and they still the results still the, the article is getting published he has to handle everything with the journal such a person only should be accepting to be the corresponding author and the co-authors also should have contributed to the paper therefore they can be co-authors the order of authorship always there, there will be lots of conflict with the order of authorship people think that whether it should be by alphabet or whether it should be by seniority or whether it should be by importance of contribution my my recommendation is it is by importance of contribution if you have contributed very well you can be the lead author or the first author and the second third and the place can be given depending upon the contribution importance of contribution and the significant uh, contribution you have made to the paper such a uh, in an, in such a order you can um, write your name in the authorship please do not try by alphabet or do not try by seniority because it doesn't make sense and people many people misuse the authorship in terms of ghost authorship honorary authorship and gift authorship so be aware of such terms where people try to come into your paper without contributing anything you should be very careful with this ghost authorship honorary authorship and gift authorship and students and now as an author when the students are contributing for the paper the study the student should be the first author and always the student should be the first author the teachers cannot be the the mentor or the supervisor cannot be the first author and if it is a research funding please acknowledge that and disclose conflict of interest disclose the source of support therefore no conflict arises out of publication and uh, sometimes disclosing the referee's name of the referee to the authors because in the developing countries they are usually ask for the suggested reviewers so though we give the name sometimes the journal may not send the paper to those uh, reviewers whom we are suggesting however in some journal they will be giving the names of the they will be giving sending the uh, paper to the uh, reviewers which are suggested by the author however they will not disclose the name of the author to the reviewer so in that way we can prevent that conflict of interest and uh, this way we can uh, avoid this challenge and uh, there are many institutions where there is lack of social software support and imperfect manuscript these are various challenges as researchers we come across so therefore uh, <clears throat> so we uh, let us uh, I, i think i have covered the very important aspects of publication and uh, how we can avoid the plagiarism how we can avoid the predatory journals how we can avoid the predatory uh the uh, conferences as well as how we can increase the research visibility and how we can improve the uh, citation many things which will be very important for our researchers i have highlighted the major points hope this session would have been very useful to you if you have any doubts i am going to share my uh, slides to all of you please you can get back to me through mail or my whatsapp so that i will be able to give my uh, suggestions or uh, recommendations in future and these are the few references which i have referred and uh, thank you again for your uh, pa patient participation i'm getting one hour how i covered uh, the important points uh, thank you again for the opportunity provided for me uh, to present this wonderful topic thanks a lot
Thank you very much. I finished the presentation. If you have any doubts, you can ask me. I will be able to share my uh, suggestions. I think I am getting lots of uh, chat. <clears throat> From audience, any doubts you can clarify with the madam. You know, can you hear me? Okay, thank, uh, thank you, madam. Uh, thank you for a nice presentation because uh, uh, just now only we can learn a lot of things from you. Uh, maybe most of them, they are given a chart, uh, they are given some queries that will be mailed to you and their mail ID also. Uh, we are share your mail ID as well as the, uh, the questions to you. Then they will contact you, you madam. Uh, Next session is handled by the Satish Kumar Jaipal, sir. Sir, are you in the line? Yes, sir. Yes, I'm available. Okay, okay. We know, we know. are you in the line? We know, Hello, sir. Okay, now, uh, the, uh, now I introduce the Satish Kumar Jaipal because uh, I think that the organizer, the co-organizer, uh, they are not in line. Uh, so after that, uh, sir, uh, please introduce yourself, sir, because uh, yes. uh, with, uh, you know, okay. <laughs> no problem. No uh, problem. Sir is the, uh, the Sadish Kumar Jabal, sir, now we are going to deliver to the general metrics. Uh, so all the sessions, especially for all the sessions, we are excellent because this is a new, new thing for us. Uh, we are not thinking about the, these much things that are present in the uh, paper uh, paper presenting. So really, this is a wonderful session, sir. Now, uh, just uh, you can introduce yourself and you can start the session, sir. Sorry for yes. the inconvenience. Sure. So, okay, sir. It's absolutely no problem. It happens. <laughs> okay, thank uh, you, sir. Yes, sir. Good afternoon, honored chair. Uh, let me have a great pleasure to meet you all in this fine evening. Uh, and it's my prestigious uh, uh, opportunity for me to share my knowledge with the historical prestigious university like Anamala University. And my sincere thanks to Professor uh, Dr. P. V. Silvam, uh, the program director of uh, physical education department who uh, provided this opportunity. And uh, <coughs> Professor uh, Vinu, who was coordinating and uh, coordinating with me for to make this event. Uh, and uh, he, even in this uh, Corona lockdown period, his uh, coordination is really uh, appreciable and is really commendable. And regarding uh, the one who introduced me with this team, uh, Professor Isa, who is a brilliant and smart researcher to collaborate with. And uh, the third one, Subramanian uh, Muthuraman, whom I have heard of him and I'm looking for the professional collaboration in the near future. 
and the last but not least dr judy arlapan uh, who's uh, i know her for the past 20 years and uh, we have many professional uh, collaborations with her and uh, let me get into my topic uh, journal metrics because uh, this uh, all uh, pre previous prestigious speakers they dealt about uh, majority of the things which i can uh, co contribute but uh, all those three topics are before to the publication but this journal metrics which happens after the publication so here once if the publication happened once if once the paper has been published it's uh, no way the researcher or the research team member can get back get back that so this particular uh, research i'm uh, this particular work i'm going to uh, share my experience with you before to that as a piece of self introduction uh, my name is uh, satish kumar jaypal i'm working as a research expert in uh, center of studies and research as a part of ministry of health it's a center in uh, ministry of health I, as additional task i'm i'm a member come rapporteur for the national ethics committee and here is my uh, mail id the the uh, listeners of uh, potential collaborators can contact me in this mail id and in this particular session uh, let us enter let us enter into the session the publication uh, metrics it's one of the thing which we do regularly in in our day to day life when we cross the newspaper uh, st newspaper stalls or in the newspaper rack in the uh, newspaper stall we could see many newspapers but we will pick one exactly why because the 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 reason maybe many uh, uh, many with us like uh, we want to have the the reliable news or the paper quality or print quality or journal or the writer or many many other things so based on that we pick up the right paper and we read and we cherish our reading in the same way even for uh, in research papers also while doing review of literature or while planning for uh, the research or doing uh, trying to solve the problem based uh, i mean solution based uh, problems so all all those things we will be looking at different resources especially in this tremendous uh, technological uh, advancement we come across with the different uh, search indexes like which are shown in the screen so each and every paper every journal indexing uh, indexing uh, service we will be able to understand each and every it's it's unique each and every research uh, index or indexing service is unique so based on the request side thing we'll be uh, selecting the research resource to go further so before to that i'd like to say i'd like to say journal metrics it's it's a measure it's an objective measure to compare and often rank the scholarly publications and as well as journals so in this uh, session i'm going to share my knowledge with you all with the journal metrics the nature of journal metrics limitation and as well as uh, the points to be considered when uh, we are looking for journal metrics uh, tools and as a factor uh, in important uh, consideration for the impact factor five years impact factor google scholar metrics i think this uh, all these items have been just highlighted by dr judy arlapan in addition to that uh, h index iten index alt metrics egen factor immediacy index so this all the uh, variables which we consider uh, when we are looking for the publication and uh, sjr rank because uh, while while considering the paper for publication we, for what we are publishing we must be very clear for, as a researcher why i need to publish my paper so if if in order to get famous or in order to get uh, funding or in order to attract my funding agency or in order to get the most uh, scientific audience or in order to be live uh, till the long duration in the scientific fraternity so like based on this we will select any one of the tool so during my upcoming explanations i can explain you for uh, which factor would be uh, most suitable for the scenarios which we plan in near future and uh, finally i'll be sharing my experiences with uh, tips and tricks to improve your impact factor 
H index or high I10 index. So this this will help the researchers to get uh, more uh, impact factors. So coming back to journal metrics. So journal metrics is the measure where we can compare and uh, usually we rank the journals and as well as the articles or scholarly publications. And this usually used to for journal rankings, journal uh, important uh, factors and as well as the, the impact of a journal. Uh, journal metrics usually allows the researchers and scholars to compare the, uh, the journal papers and as well as the periodicals. So here, uh, let's get into the impact factor. Impact factor is a, is a, is a commonly uh, accessible measure where we measure the one particular uh, person's impact on scientific fraternity. For example, now if I'm a researcher, I had submit, I have, uh, I have done research. Maybe the research would have taken a few years or few months. At the end of my research, I'll be publishing it. So when I'm publishing it, it should stimulate the next researcher to start where I end with, or it should stimulate all other stakeholders to take my research findings and to incorporate in their practice. So here the imp uh, impact factor is measured as average number of times, which is measure, uh, average number of uh, articles which has been cited in past two years. So for example here, uh, I'm, I'm giving you an example how it has been calculated, the methodology of uh, the impact factor calculation. For a, uh, for a paper, journal paper, which has published, it, it will be calculated by the following methodology. So in first one, uh, the total sites in particular year, and from the total sites as on date, for example, to, now it is 2020. 2020 is not over. So up to 2019, we can calculate the impact factor. So up to 2019, how it has been, how many impact factor it has been, how many citations have been made in that particular paper. So that says to, uh, total, total sites up to 2019. And B, it says uh, only past two years. I'll be taking only two years because uh, the research is it's ever growing field. Day by day, it's, it's expanding. So here, uh, when a person is referring to the factors which was done three, four years back, the person is little outdated. Just imagine if a person who's referring to the, uh, referring or citing to the scientific journal, which was 15 years back, that's completely out of fashion and out of date. So uh, here impact factor, which is which will be calculated only for the two years. So this two years, among the total uh, citation in the past two years, how many citations have been calculated that comprises B. Uh, statistically, we can say, uh, B is a subset of A, and uh, C is the important number where in that particular journal, in this particular duration, for example, if you are calculating for 2019, past two years, 2016, 2018 to 2016, and as less the same duration will be taken, and the total number of articles will be published in that particular period will be calculated, and finally, the impact factor of 2019 will go B divided by C. So I can explain you with an example. In a journal, totally 90 research papers published per year. And uh, up to 2019, 45 uh, citations have been made so far. And among these 45 citations, 30 citations from last two years. That means the last reach period. And other rest 15 are before two years, maybe five years back, maybe three years back, but we are considering only the two years. So here A goes to 45 papers, so 45 citations up to 2019. B, it goes to the subset of A, 45 minus, minus uh, 15 papers, which was done two years back. So it comes 13. And totally uh, C is the total number of papers, 90 papers per year, per year. We are calculating for two years. So 19 to two is equal to 180. So the impact factor goes to 30 divided by 180 is equal to 0 0.166. So in each and every journal, when we are submitting the new paper, we will come to know uh, in the journal homepage itself, they will mention ho uh, impact factor for 2019. And followed by that, there'll be an asterisk. 
when you click that asterisk they will tell you the methodology how they have been included so here as i told you here 90 research papers it might include original research papers or it might include uh, uh, concept papers or it might include review papers so depends on the methodology we can come to know for example in few journals they say in every issue five original papers two uh, commentary article like that they would have given classification so here the methodology will give you exactly either the impact factor has been ca calculated only for original paper or all other papers okay so this we can come to know so point 166 is the research uh, impact factor for this particular research so here here is an example so this is one of the since it is a physical education department i had started with the sports medicine this is one of the well reputed uh, top one journal in the world and british journal of sports medicine it started from 1964 and uh, the impact factor calculated from 1974 to present even 2020 they are calculating it's ongoing process if you if you see in 2019 you can see the number of citations as i told you 3 years they are calculated 13532 citations had been made out of 786 uh, journal papers so they are calculated b this is the b total number of citations in past 2 years and uh, total number of papers published in those duration so 17.2 is the impact factor that means very very high impact factor right so when coming to the next one 2020 it is 2020 as i told you earlier we are traveling in still in the june and the middle of a corona issue but still people they had submitted uh, 9740 citations have been made out of 651 documents so the year is not completed it's an ongoing process so it has been still under tracking so that's why it says even in between the 6 month it is updated on 10th of june as as mentioned here it is made, uh, calculated up to 10th of june because the last issue was made on 10th of june and as on 10th of june 651 journal 651 articles have been published out of that 970 9740 citations have been made so the 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 impact factor for this year as on date it comes up to 15 so the same way the next indicator is five year impact factor so this is nothing but there is no difference from impact factor in impact factor in previous it was two years now it has been calculated for five years so the same way the to uh, total articles submitted up to 2015 2019 is a b is going to be for the past four years so for for the past five years the the original papers which is published only this duration and the number of articles c is going to be only the number of articles published only in this duration hence the five year impact factor goes like b divided by c as the same example i am giving you another example in a journal totally 90 research papers had had been published in a year 140 citations are made in last five years among this 140 citations 140 uh, citations from last five years sorry i made some uh, simple uh, things here so 110 uh, citations in last 5 years uh, the published rest 30 or before 5 years so hence the a goes to the total number of publication up to date 140 and uh, the total number of publication published in last 5 years 140 minus 30 goes 140 and 90 papers they are publishing the, so total uh, papers per year going to be 450 hence the impact factor will be 110 divided by 450 is equal to 0.244 so the journal which has the five years impact factor will be 0.244 and uh, this is a little higher level of uh, index so once if i complete all uh, indexes i can explain you what uh, what particular variable relates to the particular instances for example this particular uh, indicator called h index which shows the productivity of an author which says it it's, it's uh, statistically we say median of occurrences like uh, uh, here the citation will be ca calculated as a median so number of papers are uh, arranged in ascending order by the time or by the citation 
and number of citations will be uh, taken will be taken as median so based on that the type the h index will be calculated sometimes this has been called as hish index or hish number and here in in this particular variable uh, in this particular indicator different indexing uh, engines or different uh, publishers or different different methodologies they follow different uh, different different types of uh, methodology so we will not be able to get if i'm i'm a, a researcher in one index i'll get 6 on the another index i may get 8 so here there should the, the methodology should be clear when you represent your h index for example here uh, this will explain you with a uh, uh, this will explain you in a better way uh, i am a researcher i had submitted nine uh, papers and first paper cited 33 citations second paper cited 30 uh, citation third 15 fourth 12 and as goes on eighth one is the most recent one i had got one citation so far ninth one no citation so far <laughs> so here uh, i'm i'm writing my uh, citations into ascending order so the median is 6 on 6 so that means my 6th paper i mean all my 6 of my papers have been minimum of 6 times so here you can ask me why the all 7 papers also minimum of 2 times but here the diagram will explain you how it can be calculated for example here the number of papers are uh, listed in x axis citations are listed in y axis so here the exact paper the point where it intersects the minimum and minimum is going to be the h index okay and another another uh, indicator is i10 index this will say about uh, the number of paper which has uh, 10 minimum of 10 citations per paper so i can take uh, i can stand up on the shoulder of the giant because uh, this is the statement which is given by uh, albert einstein at many occasions uh, so albert einstein we all know the scientist is a very good uh, scientist even uh, he got famous even centuries across uh, in his uh, google uh, scholar profile this is the very basic uh, google scholar uh, which which can help us uh, google scholar is a page it's a service provided by google where we can uh, come to know about number of citations and what their contributions in free of cost so here uh, even if i if any one of uh, you can register as a google uh, uh, user service you can get this service once if you registered yourself as a google scholar you will your papers will be sorted aligned and respective to that citation will be sorted and based on the year you can use different sorting mechanism either you can sort by year or you can sort by citation so in in uh, google uh, according to google scholar uh, citations albert einstein is been cited throughout his lifetime as 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 on date 100 uh, 131550 times and but for last 5 years he has been cited only 38372 times so his index like has how we say the calculation for h index the year year of uh, publication and as plus number of publication is given in this particular diagram so based on this 110 uh, his throughout uh, his lifetime uh, what uh, as on date uh, 110 is his, his h index 63 is going to be his 5 year h index so this 63 is five year impact factor sorry the five year the, the impact factor is this on uh, 1,31,550. five year impact factor is uh, 38372 and the same way five year h index is 63 and i10 index is throughout its career 383 for five uh, for the last five years 212 this means Uh, 63 of his publications have gained a minimum of 63 citations 217 publications has minimum of 10 citations this says uh, if if impact factor is high that says the person is very good in research if h index is very high he did his uh, in depth research that means very focused research that means going in, in and in so for example my first research i'll come up with my uh, findings limited findings 
my second research will start from where i stop in my first research from their recommendations i'll start and i'll go further i'll go further on my second research so i i'll do continuity of my research that says as focused research but in uh, iten index says if 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 my iten is very good very high number that says i am i am taking my science uh, as as egalitarian view my broad uh, view towards the problem or problem solving approach in my specialty so i can give you an another example is a very well known person uh, to all of us apj abdul kalam the former president of india so in his paper we all know he is the most he is the person who influences us in a, in a good way uh, his citations all citations will be 724 for five year uh, impact in citations will be 275 his h index will be 7 for five years 10 for last the uh, 10 for all all of his cumulative h index for 11, 11 of his i10 index and six of five years index will be calculated that means is all of his papers uh, six of his papers minimum of uh, six papers have minimum of 10 citations so this will be explained by this particular diagram bar diagram which will be calculated every year or, and every citation which which we make in the uh, in the papers and you know about uh, economist from india uh, who was the former governor of uh, uh, reserve bank of india his citations that also shows the same way and uh, this particular uh, doctor who made lot of citations this why i made this particular citation is we all will say yes if a person who is suffering from diabetes they may live uh, till their life uh, till the end of their life with diabetes but he made a uh, magic in in one of his uh, patient life uh, recently he had celebrated 100th birthday of his patient that means a person who who he, he had shown to the world saying that even a person who is suffering from diabetes he can live up to 100 years so his index Uh, h index is 92 he's been focused on most of his research if you look into his research citations in the bottom you can see it's most of the paper it will be focused only on diabetes and h index is uh, is most of his paper 763 of his papers which has published in last 5 years as minimum of 10 citations so uh, now now we can we can understand what we want to be either we want it to get high impact factor either we want to get famous then you concentrate on citations if you want to show yourself that saying that you are working in the same scientific uh, plane and you are uh, doing your focused research try focusing improving your h index uh, yes i want to be in my specialty i just want to expand my wings i want to see the egalitarian view and egalitarian uh, problem solving approach in my profession you can take i index you can focus on improving your i10 index in general this is the particular uh, impact, particular uh, take home message we can take so impact factor which can be set which can be used for to identify a uh, person's impact or impact of a journal h index also can be uh, calculated to measure or to assess or evaluate an individuals or author impact i10 it it shows uh, the productivity of an individual so in minimum of uh, how many papers have got how have got uh, 10 citations and next most recent uh, one the next parameter the next methodology or next next tool which we uh, the, the modern world which we are using just now dr judy arlapan told us uh, many ways how to get reach the wider audience so this uh, that particular uh, cap, that particular activity will be evaluated by this mechanism called altmetrix usually initially it was called called as alternative uh, metrics of uh, publishing or disseminating information but being a government agency and a funding uh, uh, group uh, funding uh, committee i we we would look into the alt metrics for example here uh, during funding we will look at uh, the the credibility of the researcher by impact factor the focused research by the h index and as well as the usability of the research by the iten index 
so if a person if if i want to fund for a person or if i consider funding for a, a project which has been proposed by a researcher i look into all these three parameters so you, uh, dear listeners if you are looking for uh, funding or uh, looking for any fund based uh, research projects in near future you please focus on all these three things impact factor h index and as well as i10 index so if all these three are very good in number uh, no matter uh, where you are no matter what you are you will get funding so this particular alt matrix which will be used in in a modern uh, in a modern advancement with the information technology so here this will be used as a broad spectrum of indicators especially in uh, twitters uh, blogs policy briefs social bookmarking and as less number of article views or number of uh, uh, view, uh, citations or number of uh, forwards number of downloads all these things are really matters so this particular service is useful for all the people like for the publishers for the institution for the individual i mean the researchers for the funding agencies for the research and development units so like it's, it it works in all the spectrum of the people like not only for the specific but previously it was uh, the the usability of the previous indicators like impact factor five very impact factor all these things the scopes will be limited to a, a focused group but this particular uh, uh, research parameter have uh, no limitations it can be used by anyone or uh, in in any aspects so this is this would be an uh, example perfect example to explain you about the alt matrix so this is number 1 of 100 the top 100 this is the first one which takes one uh, so here uh, this particular uh, alt matrix score it comes 13500 and all this is been here it shows this uh, called as donut sweet donut like donuts we fond of eating donuts so here this particular diagram shows as donut diagram so it shows each and every color is given as legend here so this particular research work is this is the title and it's been published in this particular journal and under the specialty the date of journal it will be sorted in every article the affiliation that means the researchers or affiliated institutes so here it says uh, the total number of citations and as well as uh, the total number of uh, news stories i mean uh, news how the, this particular research has been used by people and 11 blog post usually the blog writers as judy arlapan told if you are a researcher you will be citing some reference so here uh, when you are considering the benchmark of your one of the publication then only you will be writing in your uh, uh, blog so this says the number of blogs how many blogs it has been included or how many policy documents policy documents means when it has been considered to convert to become a law or convert to become an, a policy in in particular institution so this particular paper is considered as for one policy so likewise it it's been given in in different classifications like tweets facebook sharing and reddit post quora uh, discussion and especially the referencing uh, software like mendeley so how many readers are using this particular paper in mendeley so all these things are been highlighted here so here when a person is using uh, the research the research findings will be sorted here in in modern in in this modern world so he, this particular uh, list of the users or uh, beneficiaries will tell you the usability of the research and also this i am uh, i would like to give you in this corona situation we all uh, are uh, having difficulty and as well as the researchers they are doing their job so this particular uh, show, page will show you the date when it was published on the journal or the source where it has been published and in terms of order this is given in the other language look at uh, the english so here the topic and as well as the alt matrix score so in this particular alt matrix rating which has measured only the scores which is above 500 so this all particular uh, numbers which has shown here the particular uh, or a particular uh, research of the proximal origin of uh, sars corona virus 2 has scored 34492 which is published in national medicine journal so this also will tell us how uh, effectively we can contribute because if i publish my paper this indirectly says that once if i publish my paper i should not give up i have to share it and i i have shared it with any of the publications which are shown here 
in this particular uh, news uh, stories or I can publish it in the newspapers or I can publish it in the news magazines based on uh, with a reference to my uh, research work and as well as findings or recommendations or uh, to give it to the users, to, to the policy makers. Or it can be given in uh, tweets with uh, with the specified hashtags or specified uh, uh, news feeds. <laughs> So the next one is next uh, particular indicator is called as EGN factor. This is partic this particular uh, EGN factor. It's been calculated for uh, five years, which has been published among uh, top reputed journals. Like if I'm publishing, yes, I can publish it to many. I can I can publish it to many, but here. The, the 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 difference which makes the uh, paper to get this amazing. as a, as a famous researcher who is publishing in an upcoming journal will, will produce much benefit to the journal or the upcoming uh, researcher who is publishing a very good well reputed top 10 journal in the world the researcher gets it. so here what makes the difference? What the researcher wanted to be, either the the public the publication or the journal uh, should be in high reputed journal. So the visibility of my research also will be high. So even though I can get very good high impact factor, unless otherwise my E factor, EGEN factor is less. That means I, I'm not that famous to compare with my uh, impact factor. So this is called as uh, EGEN factor and a, and a sub indicator called as article influence score so both the score which has mentioned as maximum of one as a as a mean score so if it is less than one my work is not being accredited accredited as well as the scientific fraternity but if my score is more than one that says that the probability of acceptance of my research work and to take my research findings to consider their own research is high. So this page will explain you uh, what it is. The same journal, British Journal for Sports Medicine, which I had shown you in the beginning, the same journal, even though the impact factor is very high, the EGEN factor is very low. And as well as the article influence is very low because the it, it, it shows 1.7. The 0.7 is higher than the uh, expected limit. So this will tell you, even I can get impact factor in uh, British Journal for Sports Medicine, but in terms of article influence factor, which shows very less. So this will help the researcher to select the journal and as well as to, to oh, yeah. what they want. Either they, they want to get, because they want to be famous in their scientific fraternity, or they want to uh, approach yeah, the yeah. agency, <laughs> depending on their requirement, they can go about uh, the factor. And the most important immediacy index is uh, the Im Im factor is a immediate immediacy indicator. So this will tell us how quickly my paper has been absorbed by the scientific fraternity. For example, if I publish paper today, uh, yeah. how many of them they are taking my paper, or how many of them taking my research uh, uh, recommendations quickly? So this says, this says journal immediacy factor and as well as aggregate immediacy factor. Journal immediacy index, JII is uh, calculated for few months and few years and as well as aggregate, it shows from right from the beginning to till the end. So here, this page will explain you in a better way how the impact factor is being uh, set for the journal called Nature, two year impact factor is 43 five-year impact factor is 45. That is, even though there is no much difference, that means even for the five years also, this has been used in the same way. Egen factor is 1.2 and each and every article which affects the readers as 22 percentage of, uh, I mean, to, to make them to uh, cite is 22 percentage. That means if I publish my paper in, in, in the journal called, journal called Nature, the article will be used in quickly 22 uh, percentage of higher probability to get published. This is the same way the nature branded journals, two year impact factor, five years are listed here. If you go to this particular link, you can see what are all the other journals uh, which are listed and how you can use in your uh, upcoming papers. 
at the same way like uh, this has been uh, calculated for uh, uh, journal and as plus the individual so the next the major uh, another one very famous uh, indicator is shimago journal rank so this will tell about uh, the journal how the journal will be evaluated for the past three years so this particular uh, journal which used for three years because impact factor is considered for two years this particular factor for three years so when when you are reading the paper or when you are comparing the uh, impact factors and as the uh, shimago ranking we must be very clear for how many years it has been calculated or uh, how many uh, for the duration is been calculated especially when you are comparing with impact factor and as plus shimago factor you must understand the time limit how how long it's been in, how long the impact factor is calculated how long the shimago factor is calculated then only the comparing uh, parameter will be the right one so this one uh, as i told you this one it says uh, the reputed journals for example if i am going to be the scopus journal uh, this shimago rank will be calculated number of upcoming citation only from scopus indexed journals that means the value which has been calculated the index citation and as well as the upcoming citation are from same source so when it is going to be the same source the, the number of the, the, the calculated impact factor will be the most reliable one so that's why it's been mentioned here so in the same way the shimago journal ranking also it's been for the journal called the ca a cancer journal for clinicians its type is journal and the shimago ranking is 88.192 the q1 it says the uh, the quartiles each and every journal will be included for the quartile range whichever is comes in the q1 is highly reputed and highly cited journal so so far we were uh, uh, we were exposed to the citation factor so this one included with the prestigious and as less it considers higher level in the science in terms of sharing and utilization of your research so the same way the same other parameters are given total factors as on today total factors for uh, 3 years for the total reference up to today and uh, total uh, citations for last 3 years and and so on so here uh, even if if i want to based on my requirement i can select what i want to what uh, type of journal i can select and i can publish it so here uh, this is most important factor this will explain uh, the reason because uh, the journals what are all the indicators they are using for individuals what are all the indicators we are using for the journals uh, from the web of science indexing factor indexing uh, engine we come across with impact factor five year impact factor alt matrix eugen factor h index immediate index yeah, under uh, scopus index journal shimago uh, ranking will be calculated this all for the uh, journals if i if for example if i am going to publish a paper in a journal my paper uh, will be included for uh, calculating these all indicators for the particular journal but this uh, individual scholars this will give the reputation to my own work if uh, if i had published one journal i have if i had published one research article and uh, this google scholar metrics h index i index or alt matrix analysis analytics will be calculated for my own contribution it is it, it will not talk about other indexes other indexes of the journal or other uh, comparing parameters in the um, uh, another scientist who are in the same profession it it will not be so so this uh, the one which has mentioned in red color it's all, this all indicators will be individual so even if we start publishing in a, a cited journal uh, in in a reputed uh, indexed journals we also can can come up to the h index h index i index hyten index and alt matrix analysis so uh, this i'd like to show it to the uh, listeners to understand what are all the other journals are there once if you go to this particular site scopus.com you will come to know what are the, what is the subject area if you click whatever the subject area related to your specialty for example if i am doing physical education i had selected uh, uh, physical therapy sports therapy and rehabilitation so totally 256 well reputed journals are there with respect to that i have the site for percentiles and citations for the last 5 years 3 years like i have different parameters 
so i can uh, play around with my data whatever i want i can split it and can uh, uh, go beyond uh, what i want to do something like that so on the same way if i wanted to do some kind of i had uh, i did my research on uh, protein supplementation for the athletes it doesn't mean that i should go only for sports medicine or physical therapy even i can go for nutrition so here the learner the learners can go to in subject area sports medicine sports nutrition or nutrition or protein like if you give more keywords you, the possibility of getting number of journals listed down will be more so it would be easy for the listener it would be easy for the researchers to pick up the right journal and to go for publication so the same way as i told you the british journal of sports medicine when when we click on uh, the first journal british uh, journal of sports medicine it comes here the same way it comes with the other in depth numbers site score 17.2 impact factor and number of impact factor per patient number of articles published in the duration and as well as on date what chimago ranking it has been mentioned here so this say it's a well reputed journal because it's more than one and and as plus uh, it's it's one of the top journal in the in in the field so uh, the the learner the the researcher want to get them uh, get to disseminate this research findings quickly they can go for such type of journals so in addition to that here it show it will tell you this particular diagram will explain you site score values or in y axis in x axis or years and as less well number of uh, percentile uh, when when the journal it was and as less well in right side you can see the percentile in category so all these three variables which will tell you about how the the journal will be evaluated how the article will be calculated for the site scoring so uh, now uh, let me share with a experience which i come across uh, in 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 this fraternity Uh, one of the very famous uh, institute uh, professor dr v just to say because he is one of the scientists like us i don't want to put his full name uh, so i just masked his name with uh, dr v he is a computer scientist from one of the well reputed institution uh, one of the well reputed uh, private deemed university in chennai and he has been awarded as a uh, best scientist in uh, by ministry of human resource development by government of india based on his impact factor and he has been awarded with a with a cash prize after that uh, after a few months uh, the another one bibliometric analysis says that the same person who had received 94 percentage of his uh, citation or done by himself that means if i do research my impact factor all will be done myself or i'll uh, pressurize my department people okay my colleagues and my sub, my inferiors okay you add my paper into the site like that he included and he is the only one but i don't want to say that he did so but not only he but also more than 100 100000 of researchers have been shown 50 percentage of their citations are from their own their own origin even we we cannot uh, get rid of this situation because if i am doing my uh, focused research one or the other way i have to focus on my previous paper so the the median uh, self citation rate was fixed up 12.7 percentage I, uh, the the self citation should not go beyond 12.7 percentage even nowadays the publishers and as well as the scientific fraternity trying to minimize this but uh, but this is inevitable to some extent so being a listeners or being being a researchers we should not go for self citation for unnecessary uh, reasons even if it is really important it can be included and uh, here uh, the another one important uh, factor is uh, males are not exceptional so he in this condition too in in the same bibliometric analysis says uh, 50% of uh, more uh, men are tend to go for self citation so uh, being a uh, person or being a researcher when we are looking at the uh, when we are receiving the paper it is our moral responsibility to look into the references and as well as to check with the uh, author or any listed author's name is been mentioned in the self citation that we need to evaluate that will improve the credibility of the work what we do 
and uh, this is not only in india but also in all other countries uh, but here it's given down uh, it, the, the explanations are given down in the bottom this all the numbers which has given up to 1000 uh, papers because ukraine uh, russian federation and indonesian government uh, indonesian uh, researchers are very high in uh, self citation rates and uh, turkey united states united kingdom or less than uh, the the expected rank but india comes under just above the median self citation rate so here we do have uh, many limitations uh, this all the things uh, partially has been covered by dr judy and the number of self citation if i have more uh, citation that doesn't mean that i have did a quality work in my in my field and uh, review articles as dr judy said uh, review articles have been published that means you will be including many articles so uh, the, the information which you get from your review articles will be very high in volume so when when a researcher is looking for review articles you tend to get cited more and more and the same way if a researcher want to get a very high in cite very num very good number of citation in a quick span of time more of review articles this is what uh, the, the the information <clears throat> and uh, as i told you the self citation and role of coercion plays a very vital very vital uh, uh, source for the researcher Uh, if a, if a department head says no no you have to cite my publication if it is not relevant it is our it is the moral responsibility of the researcher not to cite his paper and can say the healthy way of uh, explaining to him this is not at all relevant to the current context of the proposed research paper so it should not be included like it should be ignored otherwise it it improve the uh, self citation indirectly it it questions about the credibility of your research work and uh, the next one is as i told you the researchers are unique the researcher from nutritional science and researcher from uh, uh, physical medicine researcher from chemistry can't be compared to each other so each and every one of us uh, one of them have their own unique uh, uh, scientific fraternity so on the same way comparing journals also should not be done and uh, the most important thing is the senior uh, professionals or the senior researchers those who can write books or can contribute for uh, writing book chapters uh, will be uh, spending their time and their spending their research experience and uh, writing as a research uh, findings into their books but since the scientific fraternity is a very uh, less number of uh, references are from books it it usually will not be cited so it is uh, it is the moral responsibility moral and ethical responsibility of the researcher to look into the books and as well as to look into the journals because books means which has published in last 5 years can be included for the book uh, to take to consider the public to consider the uh, citations and as well as uh, so far in the in the scientific fraternity we have not developed any one particular source of particular methodology of calculating the impact factor or representing or identifying the factors as told you different met different methods at different timelines have been used so that should be noted down clearly and uh, the, the the final part is tips and tricks are the desirable practice when you are considering citation in dissemination once if i publish my paper i should disseminate my research papers in a healthy way either in twitter or in whatsapp or in a group or in any one of the scientific fraternity disseminations i can make and the target audiences of my, my research paper either the society, the professional society or non governmental organizations or respective government departments or related stakeholders either the commercial department or in the industrial sector or the one which being a researcher i can identify few people will be the potential beneficiaries of my research to all of them i can share my research so by then here the the, the gap is the research the, the the people those who i told here the listed down here they are not well aware of the research endings here like push and pull so here the researchers have to push the information to the people to the beneficiaries the research, the, the users or the beneficiaries should pull the information from the scientific from the researcher so here if this gap is widened 
the the impact you will not get quick impact factor so if you want to get a quick impact factor once if you do the research come up with an a key messages either to make a paper or to generate infographics push it to the research push it to the beneficiary beneficiaries the beneficiaries who are uh, who are in the need of data so who are in need of validated and credible data so if you prove that your uh, work is credible and validated the users will pull pull your data and start using that so automatically your impact factor and as well as the hit index will increase and uh, next important thing is in the, the modern science which which comes up the, the end of the publication it ends up it start where starts with knowledge management tools here there is a knowledge there is a department called knowledge translation so how your knowledge is been translated so that will be shown here and as well as uh, sharing with open access and professional sharing here the matter it comes with the ethical dilemma for example if i had published one of the paper not in open access the paper will be charged for 15 dollars or 20 dollars for a week if i am a researcher i am uh, i am uh, i had i am the author of the journal sorry i am the author of the article i had published in the journal that doesn't mean that i can uh, share it for the people so here i should get the permission from the publishers either is the journal will be applicable or usable uh, can i share it with the users as open sharing without paying that 5 dollars or 10 dollars so here the ethical dilemma plays a vital role so the researchers must be very clear whenever they are submitting their papers to the open access journal this ethical dilemma will not arise if they are not publishing in open access journal they should get the permission from the publisher before they are sharing with the uh, with the potential beneficiaries and as well as the peer involvement here uh, learning from each other so here uh, here it, it is like uh, uh, it's like even though it's a dog eat a dog world if you include your peer yes i have published such a work you can share it with your peer so the, the 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 your professional friend may can make use of your paper so there will be the higher probability of your friends to cite your paper so by that through then you can get more citation uh, usually the untold story of uh, h index is if you have uh, your papers are listed down 1 2 3 4 like that so the the maximum number of your uh, median number of citations and medium number of your uh, number of your article will be calculate will pro, will produce index so if you have more number of uncited very old papers which is more than 8 uh, years or 10 years please remove it from your database once if you remove from your database your number of papers or number of publications which are cited will be sorted because in this you can ask me oh i did my research in uh, 10 years back so if you want me to remove all my work is is it a scrap work no not in that way so this past eight years nobody had cited so uh, the probability of getting cited in next two years will be very less so in order to give the uh, chance for the upcoming papers now now once if you are developed you can give this for the upcoming papers you can focus more items on the papers for your potential benefit so it would be in a wise and ideal ideal uh, suggestion to remove your old unstated papers from your uh, profile so that your h index will be high so through our uh, take home message uh, so now uh, hope you all understood about uh, uh, journal metrics and its relevant use and what's the use of uh, reference uh, giving referencing and right uh, resource and uh, how to improve your credibility of work and uh, especially what is the importance of, of publishing in uh, indexed journal as a focused research as well as uh, why to avoid self citation and how to avoid self, self citation and we being scholars uh, we should uh, strictly follow the publication ethics it will improve the credibility of the researcher and as well as the research work okay so uh, this is the time open for the floor is open for the questions thank you sir yes sir 
dear participants, if you have any question, uh, please you can ask. This now the session is for discussion. We can have a discussion uh, with our resource person. Participants, Sir, if you uh, have any doubt, just unmute your mic and can ask. You know, if you know more questions, you can. Okay, sir. Okay, okay, sir. Okay, sir. Uh, thank you. Sir. Uh, so last question, uh, sir, Madam, how do you do the eye-opening session? And it created awareness regarding predatorial journals, journals, plagiarism, and citation, and everything. And we got a we received a very knowledge from very, very, very much information from Adam. It was very informative and it was very eye opening. Similarly, this session, it was an excellent session by Satish sir. And it was, it was also very informative. Most of us does not know what is the indexing and how this indexing was calculated. Really, it was an eye opening session, sir. We came to know how, to, how, the, how the indexes were calculated. Thank you, sir. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you. Thank you, madam. Thank you. Sir, uh, sir, Zalum, sir. Sir. Yeah, yeah. Sir, uh, shall I propose uh, a vote of thanks, sir? One minute. Yeah, before that, just I want to tell something else. Okay, sir. So I thank all the participants and the resource persons. Uh, especially I thank Isa because uh, yeah, when he was on a play, he is a basketball player. He admitted in Anamana University through Sports Quota only. Whenever he play, he make a leadership quality in that because uh, he coordinate and he, he is uh, more, uh, as many as time he achieve his goal through that teammate. So that leadership quality is having. So same thing just I assign him as Muhammad Isa. So he arrange very good resource persons through the resource person. Definitely, the, all the participants, they are benefited. In this occasion, I thank you and to all the participants and the uh, uh, Muhammad Isa and the team, the uh, resource persons, uh, that great opportunity for everyone else to involve in this thing. Thank you, sir. Uh, you know, continue. Yeah. Sir, regarding feedback form. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, we will, we, will keep, we will send the feedback form through your WhatsApp. Sir, I don't have WhatsApp number. That's what I'm asking. Okay, yesterday just, you told uh, me that. Uh, yesterday you, in you informed us that city. you will be sending through mail. Yeah, uh, so yeah, far, yeah because most of it. the mails are. Uh, it's uh, not clear. Mails and mail IDs number. are not clear. Okay, no, no problem. Just you, you note the number nine two triple four nine triple four nine. So just a minute, sir. Hello, sir. Uh, repeat once again, sir. Uh, just note down the number. Yes. Yes, tell me, sir. 92449449. Just yes, sir. Just a message. We will take it up. Okay. Okay, fine. Sir. Okay, good enough. Thank you. National level winner on preparation national exam. I thank Dr. P. V. Selum, sir, head department of physical education, Anamal University, for giving me the opportunity to express my gratitude on this special day. Today we have hosted a very effective international webinar. More than thousand uh, thousand participants participated through Zoom and YouTube platform. On behalf of Department of Physical Education, Anamal University, I express my Heartful thanks to Dr. Baljit Singh Sagaham, Secretary, AIU, my Vice Chancellor, Registrar, Dean, Dr. Nana Devan, sir. 
I would like to thank all the respected participants who are blessed us with, the, with their presence. I thank Mr. Rafiq for his technical support. Finally, I once again thank our guest of honor, Dr. Bandit Singh, Pekahon, Dean, Dr. P. V. Salun, sir, and all the participants and the resource persons. This, this program today has become this much successful. So once again, I thank our four resource persons. That's one of the TDs. And this is a special thanks for Dr. P. V. Salon, sir, for giving me this opportunity. Whenever we approached him, uh, whole heartedly, he has given opportunity to people for conducting this type of uh, program. Sir, Salon, sir. No problem. Thank you, thank you. Please, please. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Satish sir. Thank you, madam. Thank you. Thank you, madam. Welcome. Covid-19 is unlocked. Today, we are going to talk about the COVID-19. We are going to talk about the COVID-19.